right, so the Korg Mini Log. It's a great synth, four voice, all analog, digital control, of course, which allows us to do automation from our DAWs, control other synthesizer VSTIs, all that good stuff. Um, I did notice that the connection between the USB to the computer was a little bit challenging in the beginning. I just thought I could plug and play like any other one. Uh, no, that was not the case. It gave me with MIDI out, MIDI in, uh, Korg sound, and Korg keyboard slash knob. Uh, okay, so I basically tried every single one of those to the point where I was able to record actual MIDI note data. However, upon playback, the computer not only sent the MIDI note data that I just recorded, but somehow was also changing the pitch of the oscillators. Uh, that was a little peculiar to me because I had not recorded any automation of any kind. So long story short, download the drivers, download the new update, and uh, apparently now it seems to be running better. I haven't noticed any issues with it, uh, but I really haven't gotten too in depth with recording it in the DAW since then. Uh, but I do believe it's okay, so I just haven't been able to find any information about that uh, just to let you guys know uh, for future heads up. So what you're going to want to do first is go to the Korg website, download the actual Minilog firmware update. Um, that will hopefully take care of the clicking loud envelope generators. Uh, my unit did have that in the beginning as well too, uh, however I don't seem to notice it anymore. Let's see, what else can I say? Oh, it's fantastic syncing it up with the Korg Volca Beats. Uh, that's a whole lot of fun. Also, uh, hooking it up to the MS-20 Mini and running MIDI out from the Mini Log to the MS-20, you're getting two additional oscillators. Uh, that's quite interesting as well. So, let's see, construction's great, the slim keys, I dig them, uh, of course I prefer regular keys, but I'm not going to complain with the slim keys, I'm glad they're not mini keys, um, otherwise, yeah, it's solid aluminum, top plate, which is really neat, the knobs are, are very well, you know, no wiggle whatsoever, uh, you can actually remove them, like so, uh, I ended up doing that, and I threw my Roland TR8 knobs on there. I don't know how well you can see those, but at least they have this little white indicator on them. Because the factory knobs, although it is indented, you don't really see at a quick glance with all your knobs where they're pointing, what values they're at. Uh, so that made it a lot easier to see. The switches, they feel good, just like a monotride. Uh, let's see, what else? The oscilloscope, very handy. Uh, the sequencer, again, I like the sequencer a lot. It's great, it doesn't transpose uh, your sequences depending on what note you hit, and I like it like that because that means I can now sequence a bass line and then hit play, and I can then play live on top of that pre-sequenced bass line. I think that's really cool. They also give you an arpeggiator anyways that you can play with, so it's not really a big deal to me that it doesn't transpose. Um, the ring modulation, all of that sounds great. Let's go to an initialize patch. So it's a great sounding ring modulator. Uh, the noise, don't really use the noise a whole lot, just because... Although it is good sounding noise, I only use it for percussion like hi-hats, snares, stuff like that. Now you will notice though that the filter, like a Moog ladder filter, it actually cuts out a lot of the low end frequencies the more resonance you introduce. Which is fine but it's certainly not a Moog ladder filter. Actually, I, I really like this filter a lot. It sounds great. It's all the great harmonics. It's very smooth. 
And what you can actually do is hook it up. In my case, I have an Apollo 16, so what I do is throw a distortion unit on it, uh, mostly when I'm in mono mode. Otherwise, it's a little too out of control in poly, but I'll throw a little distortion pedal on there, and, I mean, the filter sounds awesome. Otherwise, let's see, we have tempo. It actually reads out the tempo on the screen, which is helpful, unlike some other synthesizers where you're kind of guessing what it is. So this allows me to use this as a master clock for the vocal range, um, you know, all the other stuff. Anything I'm sequencing with MIDI externally from this unit is great. Let's see, what else? A little bit of noise from the, let's get out of here. Let's do, there's a little bit of noise from the delay kind of hard to hear it I think on here but you will notice it at times but it's definitely not a big deal otherwise it's a fantastic synth Korg really did a great job with it and uh, I'm very impressed okay the Korg mini log let's give this thing a little test run how about the filters Sounds very nice. To be honest, I've made this sound incredibly diverse. Um, the song that you heard in the intro there was all created using nothing only but the Korg uh, mini log. So it's a very flexible synthesizer. It is a little bit small, which is nice. It's very lightweight. Uh, the slim keys I definitely enjoy. Uh, the mini keys I hate, but these are not mini keys. These are slim keys, same as the MS-20 and the Korg Odyssey. Um, to be honest, you get used to it, and they can be really fast, so... It also has an audio input, so what you can do is run your external synths into the Korg Mini Log. You can turn down the oscillators, let that signal run through the filter, the envelope generators, the delay, uh, and you get to also see the oscilloscope so you can check out the signal of your other hardware synthesizers. Beautiful, beautiful sounding filter. Uh, you got your delay, feedback. Kind of a tape delay effect here. Chorusing or phasing out of it, but now you can also do post filter. Like in other other videos, you've probably seen goes through all the options, so I won't quite do that. So I'll just kind of go over the highlights of it and things that I learned. Also, now to do a sequence. Let's go ahead and hit record. Go into edit mode, sequence, edit. Hit your buttons, you can select tempo, step length, resolution, all the way down to whole notes. Also what I found is really cool is swing, but a really neat option is to just take it down to whole notes. Now a lot of people complain because they say you can't transpose a sequence in real time by hitting keys like you could say on an arpeggiator or something. The good thing about that is that you can actually play along 
with your right hand as the sequencer is doing a bass line. You can also do the familiar. Motion record. And there it is. Now it has something called parameter smoothing. So if I go to edit, and I go to my motion enable, if I hit shift, I can just see what it's recorded as far as my movements. Now it says motion smooth. just more instantaneous whatever the value happens to be as you're sweeping and the note picks up. So all in all it's a great synthesizer. I love it. Two oscillators, noise source, cross mod, ring, all sorts of crazy stuff. everything that's with ring mod sync pitch uh, for the sync and cross mod depth both oscillators on both on sawtooth no wave shaping pretty neat now the wave shaping portion of it's excellent too So you get some really nice tones out of it. And square. Just pulse width. The nice thing is it goes all the way to nothing. Now I was a little curious about the oscilloscope in general. I figured it was kind of a gimmicky thing. It is probably not all too accurate. Um, what I can say is though, just running other signals from my other keyboards into this, it does show a really accurate representation of the waveform. Uh, even when you go down to really low levels, say oscillator one, put on a, put on a saw, actually shows the nonlinear curvature of that waveform. So it is really a pretty unique little little device. It's not just showing you what it thinks you should be seeing, which I actually really like. Of course now there's always all this other stuff. You have poly modes, you have four, up to four notes. Right? You can invert your chords with the voice mode depth. That's pretty cool. Duo. Detune is the option for that. Unison, again, detune is your option. So all four voices stacked on each other, so you get a total of eight oscillators if you like. Now one thing I did learn about mono mode 
is that it re-triggers the envelope for the filter every time, which is nice. I like that, preferably over not triggering it like a legato mode. See how it keeps triggering? I like that. Now say you want to put some portamento on there. This is where it gets different. You go to program, edit, cycle through all your different options here. Portamento time. All right, yeah, let's give it a good one, 28. Now all of a sudden it starts doing the no retrigger legato mode. See that? So just be aware of that. You actually have to have your portamento off in order to retrig the envelope. Let's see, chord mode. Oh, in mono also, it gives you sub oscillators. So it basically takes the other voices, stacks them up octaves below. Chord mode gives you fifths. Gives you a lot of different chords. How would you use that in a performance? Well, you would record say your root note of each chord. And you would actually have to go automate this in your DAW. Now delay, why is there a delay when we already have a delay up here? Well, this delay is syncable, but it actually uses the other voices. So it's still a mono mode, but it's using, it's triggering the other voices synced to a clock. That's why you notice I hit it once and you hear three. So that's pretty neat on top of. So you can get some pretty cool things out of that. Now your ARP. That's your traditional ARP, and side chain is a little different. Oh, sorry, and then in the ARP, you have all your different arpeggiator modes with the voice mode depth. Now, side chain, this is your side chain depth, so you could do. I notice though is to do chords you have to hit it perfectly right on otherwise otherwise it won't catch it and it'll think you're trying to side chain whatever notes hit first now release is going to affect the depth or the time of the side chain also so go. Now, because I'm hitting a couple extra keys, like stuff like that, it's not because it's slim keys, it's actually because I'm at kind of a weird angle trying to get this camera shot for you and not be in the way, while also still being able to somehow somewhat play the keyboard. So don't be nervous about the slimline keys, they actually work quite well. So let me go through some of my presets that I've made so far, just to give you guys an idea of how diverse this thing can get.
pretty interesting. There's no actual delay or anything yet. You can still hear a because I have really fast release on the envelope generator and that's modifying the shape. I can't remember, but the shape of one of the oscillators. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Korg Mini Log, Mini Log, Mini Log. Dumb name, great synthesizer. Thanks.